This is Catherine Cespedes, and you are listening to Yogini from the Block, where we talk about taking spiritual practices and spiritual principles off of the yoga mat and into our real lives. You can listen to this bi-weekly podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play Music, and anywhere that you catch your podcasts. Hello, and welcome to episode 19, uh, titled The Energy of New. It is subtitled, What Am I Focusing On? And today we're doing some interesting, fun stuff. Um, I'm here with my producer, John Beethan. Good generic time of the day, everyone. And we are actually on Facebook Live. So right before we post this, we were actually on Facebook Live, which we are right now. So hello, everybody who is watching. And if you are listening to this later on, you can go on to uh, Yogini from the Block on Facebook. And if you're listening to this after, get the podcast on, like you heard in the very beginning, anywhere that you catch your podcast. And it's even on YouTube. Um, so you can go ahead and check it out there. So let's go ahead and get started. Last um, podcast, we were talking about practice makes permanent. And um, I was with John, and John had uh, mentioned that there is nothing new. And so this is where this is coming from. Oh, wow. Yeah. I inspired you. Yeah, so so oh. John started something, and um, my statement was, we're going to talk about that, but I have something prepared. <laughs> so <laughs> this is me going back to that. If you haven't nice. listened to episode 18, it's available for you to listen to. Again, the title is uh, Practice Makes Permanent. Do not get confused because I messed it up like 50 times <laughs> on the podcast and said practice makes perfect, but you know what I'm talking about. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. And I don't know if there's any way that we can channel what you were talking about or if you remember from me just mentioning it now, what you meant when you said there's nothing new and then you followed with, you can challenge me if you want. So here it is. <laughs> we're going to talk about that and kind of just unfold what that means. Okay. Well, I don't know. I guess when you, a little bit of, a little bit of my awareness is that at the age 66, mm -hmm. young 66, mm -hmm. is that a lot of things that are emerging mm -hmm. are just not new to me. Mm. Not new to me in terms of concept. Um, that's fairly shallow, but for many people, it's completely new. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think you know people would challenge me at that level. Yeah. Yeah, so what I did was that I, of course, looked up the definition of new. Of course you did. Of course. And what I found, there was actually a few definitions when I realized that um, in just reading them, that these definitions are actually pretty um, modern. So just to jump out of the word new, but they're pretty modern just because of the way that they're being used. Mm -hmm. But one of the definitions is being the later or latest of two of more things of the same kind. So the new iPhone, the new, you know, <laughs> MacBook, the new whatever technology is coming out um, in this in this reference, they had like the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Right. So, again, it's fairly modern, um, I, I believe, the, the way they're using it mm -hmm. in that definition. And they also have fresh or unused as another definition. And lastly, this is the one that really caught my attention, is unfamiliar or strange. And this is what you're talking about when you're saying that at this point in your life, nothing is unfamiliar or strange to you in terms of concept. Fresh or unused was a little more resonant with me. Mm. Let me tell you why. Okay. Because with everything that's going on with the environment, and as you know, I'm involved with several organizations mm. and individuals, is that we were doing this, quote unquote, fight mm. back in the 70s. Mm. So it is not new. It's just been forgotten. And I love, I really love, like you don't understand how much I love that you're bringing that up. Because the way that I see it, um, no, it's not new, but really what we're doing in this point is that we are, by we, I'm mentioning anyone that is doing anything at this point mm -hmm. that may have not done anything in the 70s mm -hmm. and was around for it. Mm -hmm. But right now we are basically standing on the shoulders, on the backs of those that did the work. And yes. so what is new about that is the energy. Yes. What's new about that is the amount of awareness that's being brought to the to the topic right what is new about that is the the uh, ideas of how to implement change with the new technology that we have now yep 
right? So because we have the platforms that we do, um, there's not just the newspaper and there's not just the radio and there's not just um, going door to door, which is something that we're still doing. That's not new. But now what is new is how fast the information is being transferred, how fast we are able to communicate to one another and how fast we can we can basically start a movement. Yes. I right? mean, the Me Too movement is a cl- really great example of how quick mm-hmm. it happened. Right. A hashtag. And the hashtag is not new because it's really a number sign, right? right? So I agree with you. And I feel like there is a newness that that moves with with just just the way we do things. So repurposing. Repurposing and also um, energy. I feel like the energy is new because there was this feeling like we need to and and I think in some areas there is still this um, need to or want to or desire to whatever term you want to use there to almost fight Mm -hmm. like we're fighting we are fighting the revolution we are fighting whatever the case may be and now what is coming up is the new thought right the new thought movement and what the new thought movement is that there the the idea is dr kathy explains this the best right dr kathy hearn who is basically walking consciousness with arms and legs she says new thought means there's always a new thought. <laughs> very basic, very simple, but very profound that there is always a new thought. And of course, that is something that's happening. And it's also, how do we explain it? In terms of there's, so there are two things that we're working with here, right? It's duality, that there is nothing new, but there are things that are new, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So um, let's just go into some of the numbers, not all the numbers of, of everything that we could bring up on in this discussion or this conversation, but just babies. How many babies are born in every day? Just every day around the world, the number is from UNICEF, 353,000 babies are born every single day. So with a new baby, there is new life. There is, um, there is just this new awareness. There is this new um, desire. Because what really makes things new is not that it's a new thought that has never been thought before, but it's the thought combined with the experience, combined with the desire that creates something new to arise from that. So that combination, that variation of um, things is really what makes what makes the difference between what was happening in the 70s and what is happening now. So now we are feeling the effects. Right. So in the 70s, they had the idea that we're going to feel these effects. Mm. We're going to we're going to see this really soon. And at that time, we weren't feeling it yet. So what added to that was the experience. What added to that is seeing what added to that is the number of cases of people getting sick with cancer. Right. The amount of um of pollution that we are seeing, the effects to our environment. So now we're combining that thought that was happening in the 70s, the experiences that we're living now, and the people that are living now with their with their experience, individual experiences, which is leading to where we are now, right? Interesting. And what comes to mind is how many people, how many souls have uh, translated? Yes. In comparison. Do you have that number? How many souls? Oh, no, I don't. So I just did. That will be on the next podcast, (laughs) number 20. So I just did. um, um, I just did the amount of births. And here's the thing. Here's what I believe. You can take this. You can leave it. Whatever resonates with you is that I don't feel or I do feel or however you want to understand that, that once we transition. Our energy, our collective thoughts, it's still there. It's still there. It's almost like if I bake a cake i don't finish it i still leave the re- the recipe i still leave some of my cake there so someone else can take that recipe and do what they want to do with that so even with the numbers of of lives that have transitioned their thoughts their energy their actions their legacy is still here it reminds me of my grandmother's uh sourdough rice and bread <laughs> <laughs> this little batter would go from generation to generation to gener. it's still alive wow and it's changed right it's shifted oh, sure. sure over over time over sure. over years and that's from a wagon train to a uh amtrak or wow yeah i you know i don't know wow but so now it's, it's a... got to be curious i'm going to contact family members say who's got the batter <laughs> who's got the recipe batter, yeah, so... batter up 
so so really that's what um came to me was the idea that um there isn't anything new and yet there is mm -hmm. so living in this duality a part of me was like which position should i take which position should i be fighting for and then i realized do i really have to fight for a position do i really have to fight for which concept is better or is there a way that i can marry these two concepts in order to translate and communicate and have a conversation that shows both sides to show that Yes, there are new things happening. There are new things shifting. There is new perspective occurring. And we're doing this because. We're doing this because there was a thought, wherever the thought may have been, that has allowed us, that has allowed me, you know, to step in and make this bigger. To make this, um, to, to create this awareness towards, towards this one subject. And... Um, And, and really what it comes down to is what am I focusing on, right? So I, I have such wonderful conversations during PREC. And one of the things was uh, politics. And I'm just not going to go into details. But one of them was that, you know, there is corruption. But does that mean that when we look at that there, the fact that there is corruption, <coughs> that that's somehow that we can change it? Or when we look at corruption, we're actually creating more of that. This is just a thought, right? You can take it, you can leave it. I'm not trying to be political. I'm not trying to say that I know more than anybody else. This is just a thought that you may play with or that you just may leave here. And the second thing is just looking at the shift. Like you can't, like we can't ignore the fact that there is a shift happening. Right. So this midterm election had the most people show up to vote. And I saw that, John, you were there and you were taking videos and I had actually gone there that morning. So when I got there, there was like I thought it was a long line. There was like 50 of us. But when you got there, there was a long line that wrapped around. You went to Claremont. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Kearney Mesa. Okay. We were in the same spot. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was the only place in San Diego, uh, um, Southern Cal, actually, or San Diego area where you could actually register and vote. So everybody, oh. all those pictures, most yeah. everybody were millennials who have never registered but wanted to vote. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And I went down to support it. Wow. And then a good friend, uh, Angus, showed up. Oh. You, you saw the story? I did see the story. Yeah. Re I did recently, see the story. Um, Canadian. Got his citizenship two weeks ago, and amazingly, he got a Social Security card. So he was able, uh, two days prior to the election, so wow. or three days, he was able to vote. Wow. It was one of the most inspiring experiences I have ever had. Wow. Yeah. And I, I just want to touch on that, and I just want to mention how um, I've never, because I remember John came to me, and he asked me if I was into politics, and I was like, oh, no, no. Like, don't give me anything. <laughs> <laughs> then something happened within me that was like, I need to go. I need to wake up early and I need to show up and I just need to cast my vote because this really does matter. And again, this shift happened literally overnight. Like, I, it was the same day that I woke up mm -hmm. and, and my dream shut off. Like, my dream shut off and I had nothing to do. So I was like, why? Like, why can't I keep sleeping? And there was something stirring within me that was like, you need to get up. And you need to go and you need to vote. Now, this may resonate for some of you and this may not resonate for others of you. Like I said, take it or leave it. If it resonates, um, take it. And if it doesn't, go ahead and leave it right here. But really what this came to for my mind is that there are at least me. I'm thinking that if I pray, if I stay in my higher consciousness, if I stay in this this focusing of what it is that I want to see, then that's all that matters. However, since I have been doing that, there was something inside of me that was stirring, that was moving, that was that was wanting to be heard, wanting to be heard so bad that I had to get up out of my bed and show up and cast my vote, vote no matter how long that was going to take. And I did it with such um, and I didn't plan this out the night before, um, but I did have it in mind. Like I, I knew the candidates. I knew everything. Um, and then I was like, I still don't know like how this feels. But my body was ready. My body was was ready. My heart was ready. Spirit was ready to make um a, to make a difference, you know. And this is happening. Um, this podcast is what I'm talking about. This podcast is occurring um, on November 9th. So if you're listening to this in the future, this is why this is a topic that I'm talking about right now. And 
um, there was there was something in me that wanted to um, that has been focusing on change and a shift. And so that change in the shift um, brought about um, what is it called? It's 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 this movement where you go from action to inspired action. So just doing right habitually um, in and out day in and day out to this moment where there was um, inspired action where I had to make an I, where I had to make a choice to go do something because I've been focusing on this shift on this change on this growth for so long that this was the inspired action for that and that's such a beautiful and perfect example of what inspired action truly looks like um, because this is nothing new to go and vote. And yet there was something new at those polls, this, this, this midterm election, right? There was this new, there was this new and fresh um, energy that was happening. And I stood there for about half an hour. And then by the time I got to vote, it was like 45 minutes later, I got to work and I was still 15 minutes early. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. This inspired action that just, moved me to just go ahead and 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 do something that it's only one vote but it makes such a big difference and this is coming from um imagination this um, this imagining of a, of a better world this imagining of a of a healthier um america right not to say that where we are is one way or another what i am saying is that there is a vision what I am saying is that there is a vision for me and what I know is that there is a vision for many others because I'm just going to read this one stat off real quick. But in, um, in the United States, there have never been uh, more than 84 of 435 seats in the House held by women. And with the vote still being counted as of today, Thursday, November 9th, 100 women have been officially declared winners. So... It's not new to have a woman representing, but it is new to have so many women representing. And it is new to have a 28-year-old, a 29-year-old um, young women representing. Like, this is new. And not only are they being elected one at a time, like, like if I'm just going to say this, um, like if Ocasio was there by herself, just because I love I love Ocasio. And if any of you know her, go ahead and tell her that I would love to have her on my podcast. But um, if Ocasio was there by herself, it would be difficult, right, for one individual. But now she has now she has support. She has community. She has accountability with other women that are basically um, looking and searching for the same the same new energy, the same new um, integrity to be held and upheld with ethics and morality. And some of you may love what I'm saying and some of you may not. And that's OK. So what this really brings about is about having healthy conversations, whether we agree or not. And that isn't new. But it, it's bring, being brought about in a new way, being based on all the conversations that we're seeing on YouTube, on podcasts, um, I was listening to Trevor Noah and Trevor Noah talks about, you know, trying to understand, trying to understand where the other party is coming from, trying to understand um, where the missing link is. And the people that do agree not to just come together and, and talk, but to go out into the world and try to figure out what what is going on and then report back to each other like this is what's going on. I think it'd be best if we do this. I'm going to try this. And then kind of just being accountable, right? Like, I'm going to go try this. You're going to go try that. And you know what? Trevor Noah is going to go try this. And then when we come back together, we can say whether or not it worked. But it's really about actively trying something new and then coming back together to see if that worked. Because I think what's really occurring right now is that um, in the past, new things have occurred, but no one has talked about it. And so we haven't been able to see what works and what doesn't. So the new thing now is to try those new things that were new 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago and talk about it, like uncover it, look at it. And the biggest realization for me during this time is there was a point where I just I couldn't stand being 
in corporate. I couldn't stand, I couldn't stand doing the nine to five, X, Y, and Z. You you know the deal. And what I recognize now is that there is no, there is no place that does not have spirit. There is no place because every corporate business has people. People have a spirit. This is the truth, right? And that means that there is no corporate place. There is no political party. There is no house that has, that is lacking spirit. Maybe we're not listening to spirit, but that's completely different than not actually having spirit. So to recognize that spirit lives and dwells in every single thing that we do, in every single encounter we have, in every single um, creative expression that is, that's where we recognize that God or spirit or Allah, whatever it is that we want to call it, lives in everything. And, and imagination is how we communicate with spirit. Seeing it, focusing on it, and then boom, there you go. You have this, you have this um, inspired action that you have to do because you're being called to do it. And Reverend Christian talks about it the best on his um, his talk, Ties of Change, which you can find on YouTube. And there's a link on my um, notes um, from October 20th of 2018, and he talks about this in such a such a profound and and um, amazing way because he talks about all the he talks about all the companies, right, that have um, either be, been given the opportunity to grow with something new, with a new idea, um, or companies that were offered an opportunity and they didn't take it because it was new and they had no idea. It was unfamiliar or strange, and so they didn't go with it. And one of his examples is uh, Kodak, which uh, my friends from Rochester know because Kodak is in Rochester and they talked about it quite a, quite a lot. I think during like um, our new member, whatever, when you first get there, freshman orientation. And um, Kodak was offered digital uh, cameras, digital prints um, way back when, way back when, 20 years before it came out. And so they were offered it and they were like, so how long is it going to take before it comes out? And the young man was like 20 years and they were like, nah, <laughs> this is going to take way too long. No, thank you. What happened is that 20 years later, um, digital cameras, digital print became very big. Kodak is thought to be vintage now. Right. <laughs> and Kodak went bankrupt. Mm -hmm. Right. So it, this happened because this new idea, this new thought, this new invention, right, is unfamiliar and and strange. So. Dr. Christian talks a lot about um, receiving, receiving and 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 being so in tune with spirit that when something new, when something new or familiar, strange comes about, that we have the um, that we have the ability to recognize it for the greatness that it can become and the patience to help and support whatever it does become, because if we stay in our stuck if we stay in this one place because this is what's working, then how much longer is this going to sustain itself? New thoughts are, are constantly occurring. New thoughts are constantly um, being being created. New inventions. And we see it with, with Apple that comes out with a new phone every year. We could barely keep up. I don't know about you, but I can't really keep, keep up. But it's happening. And for me to fight it, would just keep me from being on Facebook Live. It would keep me from being on a podcast. It would keep me from growing and from being able to share the truth that I'm recognizing and, and revealing, not only for me so that other people who are having the similar questions can can know that this is a process. This is a process and there are different places, there are different centers, there are different people that are going through this process. And this is why I do this, just so that you know that you do not have to do this alone. Just so that you know that there are other people doing the same thing in a different way, in a different city, in a different country, but you're not alone. And so... um, I'm just going to leave off with saying that wherever you are and whatever space you have around you, I just want you to know and recognize that whatever conditions you see around you is not permanent. 
And there is always new and there is always growth and there is always expansion. So the gratitude that we are here to recognize this truth only allows us to receive the the love and the guidance and the abundance and the prosperity that is is waiting it's just waiting for us to receive. It's just waiting for us to allow. It's just waiting for us to open up to and just give up the control. Give up that control so that we can have inspirational action and actually listen to it and follow through with it. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.